Right, okay guys, welcome to another video, you've seen the title! Yes, this is six absolutely stupendous C64 games that are actually better on the Atari. Now this is purely my uh, opinion. Now kicking things off, what an absolute beauty to start things off with. This game is Fort Apocalypse, released by Synapse Software. Now, it's, this game is not just one of my favourite uh, 8-bit games, it's one of my favourite video games, bar none, you know what I'm talking about, across arcades, anything, every system, it's just a fantastic game, it really is. You pilot this little helicopter, and the idea is you've got to try and uh, rescue civilians. Now what I like about it is, it's not just, you're not just shooting stuff, you've got to try and, uh, you've got to try and, you know, infiltrate the kind of underground layer by shooting bricks and dodging lasers, I mean it's really, it's like, it's like a James Bond film, you know, just fantastic. Now on the left, which they're all going to be on the left, the C64 one uh, is on the left and the Atari one is on the right hand side. Now I think most of these Atari games, I think they all ran on the Atari 400 as well, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I was running these on an Atari under the emulator. Now you're probably thinking, you know, well what's the difference, they both, both look identical to me apart from the colours, and you'd be right, you know, I mean it's up to you to choose what one you'll, you prefer graphic wise, but the big thing for me, why I think if I was ever going to play this game I would always play in the Atari and it's just because of the scrolling. Silky smooth scrolling, whereas in the C64 it's, well it's not jerky, jerky it's not as smooth as it could be. I mean the C64 is renowned for having brilliant scrolling, but this being an early game, I don't know, they don't, I don't know whether they rushed it or whatever, maybe they didn't know how to do smooth scrolling, but uh, yeah the Atari one, just plays that wee bit better because the scrolling smoother. I don't know whether it's running at a higher frame yet, actually. It may well be. I don't really know. I'm just trying to see. Possibly, but anyway, I think because the scrolling is smooth, it just makes the overall experience that wee bit better. Sound, you can hear the sound in both of them. I didn't bother cancelling one out, you know, I just thought let them both kinda play away. I mean speed wise I think yeah I think there's there's not really much to choose at all. But certainly when you're kinda in little you know when you're in really kinda cramped uh, caverns like I am here, you do want you do want the, the you know the controls to be super responsive and whilst they are they're, they're, they're absolutely fine in the C64 again I'm going on about the scrolling I think they just feel everything just feels that wee bit smoother that wee bit snappier on the Atari one I think these games, I think most of these games all came out for the Atari um, first and then they were released later for the C64. But uh, anyway, yeah, that is Fort Apocalypse and the second game is Rescue on Fractalis. Again, on the left you've got the C64 and on the right you've got the uh, Amiga, Amiga one, on the right you've got the Atari one. The one thing that uh, the Atari does have over, I think, all the 8-bit machines actually, maybe not the Amstrad, I'm not quite sure it is, it's got a really, really nice colour palette. It can display more colours on screen, um, and for some some games, you know, when you've got metallic looking things, it just looks really, really nice, so the kind of graduation of colour just looks a bit nicer. Now, the big thing for me with this game is the frame rate. You can hopefully see the game is running that bit quicker and that wee bit smoother on the Atari. And because of the type of game this is, I mean you're trying to navigate through the mountains, having a quicker, sort of smoother experience, it just makes the game that wee makes the game that wee bit nicer to play and I think probably makes it that wee bit easier as well. Now this game on the uh, when it when it first uh, started getting developed, the sort of prototype was uh, behind jaggy lines. 
Now apparently um, the source code was leaked and basically it was anyone that had behind Jaggy Lines had a pirate copy because when they eventually released the game for whatever reason they decided to call it Rescue and Fractalis. So yeah, the behind Jaggy Lines was the, the beta version of this. But sound wise, there's really not, there's not a great deal to choose between them. Sound is excellent in both. And again, all these games I'm going to let you see, as I say, it's purely my opinion. I mean, I think they're, they're fantastic games. All these games are games that I really, really enjoy on the C64. But in my opinion, I just think they play slightly better. They maybe look a wee bit better on the Atari. Everybody's going to have a different opinion. You know, you may think that the, the C64 one's a nicer one. It's purely my opinion. This is a great game, though. It really is. Um, it's so atmospheric. There's The idea of the game is to basically rescue uh, some crashed uh, aircraft pilots. Uh, and <laughs> later on... Sometimes you'll be picking up, you think you're picking up a human being, but you're actually picking up an alien. And uh, let's just, I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but, you know, make sure you've got clean underwear handy. Now it's possible that I may favour the Atari uh, version over some of these games because it was Atari one that I first saw and I suppose that's, that is a big thing. You know, we all know, we've all had, whether it's a film or a computer game, not, not a film, but you know, a computer game, you've played it, the original machine you played it on will generally be the one that you favour on. And that's possibly the case with these, but I just think, you know, technically, they are slightly better on the Atari. But uh, yeah, that's Rescue and Fractalis. Again, if you've never played it, go and check it out. This next one is Eidolon. This is by LucasArts. Again, left-hand one is the C64, right-hand one is Atari. Now, hopefully the, the difference or the, the difference between these two is immediate. The Atari one is just that bit quicker, and again, it's that bit smoother. Now, I think they use Fractal Graphics to generate the caves. You can see there, it just, again, it's a lot snappier looking. I mean, by all means, you know, there's, the, the C64 is not a bad version at all. It's excellent. But, just having that higher frame rate, I think, for me, just gives it the edge. But graphically wise, you can see there, they look absolutely identical. I think they have the same, uh, do they both have the same processor? I think they do. The idea of this game is basically just to kind of navigate, sorry, naver, naver, when did the uh, navigate have an R in it? Navigate through the different caves. Now, you've got to basically destroy um, a series of sort of small minions, collect the gems, which then let you take on the big dragon. You can see here in the, well, I just passed it in the C64. But you've got to collect, you'll see at the bottom left there, you've got three spaces you'll see the diamonds. On the Atari one, I've got the blue diamond. When the C64, I've not got any. Basically, I forgot how to play the game, and then I remembered you got to press the space bar. <laughs> and to collect, you've got to, to defeat the, sorry, to defeat the dragon, you've got to collect the three coloured gems. And to collect the gems, you've got to defeat these smaller kind of baddies, which you'll hopefully see shortly. And when you defeat one of them, they'll release one of, it's either, I think it's a is it green, red and blue? I can't remember exactly. Now there in the C64 we've got this little hoverfly thing, so we shoot him and he will release a diamond. There you go, press the space bar and we should now have the red one. There we go, we have now picked up the red diamond. Now on the left hand side, at the far left you'll see minus and plus, that's basically your energy. So in the C64 one, I've almost lost all my energy. On the Atari one, I'm fairly healthy. So in the Atari one, you can see there, I've picked up the green diamond and the blue diamond. So I've only got the yellow one to get, whereas on the C64, I've still got... Uh, these yellow ones, which I just picked up in the C64, that gives you some energy. 
Now, at the side, the top left, you've got C and H. That's basically cold and hot. That tells you how close you are to the the main guardian, which in this case is the big uh, the big dragon. Now the C64 screen is flashing, I think, which means I can now go and defeat the uh, the big dragon. There he is. Just keep blasting away, and then once you kill him, you'll move on to the next level. So anyway, that is Eidolon, another cracker. Right, next up is Stealth. Now this was a game that uh, I always remember. It was I used to go to this computer club back in the mid '80s. And there was loads of C64 owners, and there was loads of Spectrum owners. There was no BBC owners, no Amstrad owners, because I think it was basically before the Amstrad came out. And there was always one wee guy that had an Atari, and this was the game that he always played. And I always, 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 always thought the Atari one looked better. And I always thought it sounded better as well. So again, the C64 one's on the left, the Atari one's on the right. Now, to be honest, seeing them side by side, you're thinking, well, there's really no difference. And, you know, you could possibly be right, you know, the differences are very, very subtle. But there's just something about the Atari one. Again, I think it's the... I think it's the colour graduation at the background. And I know that's a very minor detail, but... To me, that just... I don't know. It just made it look really nice. You'll see in the C64 one, you've got sort of different blues and yellows and reds. It's not very subtle. But if you look at the, the Atari one, you know, the, the sky is different kind of hues of red and then it eventually, you know, light blue and then it, it kind of graduates to dark blue. I just thought that looked really, really nice. And like I said, yeah, it's it's a minor detail, but I just thought it made the Atari one look that wee bit nicer. I mean, it's not the deepest game in the world. The idea being, uh, you got to fly towards the the tower in the back, and then once you get to set, once the distance gets to zero, I believe you can destroy it. I'm saying I believe because I don't think I've ever actually completed a level on this. It's quite a tricky little game. It's it's not the deepest game in the world. I mean, I think I would almost say it was like a technical demo. I was always really impressed with you know how it looks. This little spaceship kind of flying across the. The, the surface of the moon it looked really really nice and, you know it's got some nice sound as well um, but again it's an early game but I think it's a nice game so that's stealth so yeah go and check that one out now you don't need any introduction to this one Drop Zone by Archer McLean now <laughs> Archer McLean famously said in issue one of Zap now Zap was a C64 magazine he famously said that the Atari was a better machine and that uh, Drop Zone and Atari ran a lot faster and smoother than it did in the C64. Now, as a C64 man, that was not what you wanted to hear. But, uh, yeah, I have to say the proof is in the pudding. I mean, it's an absolute awesome game. It's one of the, the standout games in the C64. It plays so well. Um, I mean, it's it could easily have been a, you know an arcade game. It plays really really well. It's fast, um, great blaster. But the Atari one again, it just plays that wee bit slicker, um, a bit smoother. And I think I actually think that that makes the game slightly easier because it is a tough tough game. And I think just it playing that wee bit quicker does make the experience that wee bit more enjoyable. You can make up your own mind um, about the graphics. You can see there the, the C64, it's it's all browns and blacks. Whereas, you know, I don't know, has the, the Atari one tried to recreate the surface of the moon? All reds and whites and that kind of stuff. There's really, there's not a massive amount to, to choose between. But again, I think, uh, like the first game we looked at, um, Fort Apocalypse, because it plays that wee bit, smoother I think it just gives makes for that wee bit more uh, enjoyable experience but as tough as old boots this it really is it's a tough tough game what makes it harder is the fact that you've got inertia that really uh, that just wraps up the difficulty now I don't know if it's really coming across in this video how smooth the, uh, the Atari one is but trust me if you play these games on original hardware you can definitely see the difference
graphics are slightly different. You'll see there the extra men on the C64. You've actually got the full little man, little picture of him standing. Whereas on the Atari, um, it's just a little head. And then you've got the, the bullets at the different side of the screen as well. But uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's uh, it's a great game on either on either system. But again, if I was going to have to play one, I would always play the Atari one. So yeah, that is Drop Zone. And the last game I'm going to feature in this uh, this video is Boulder Dash. Now, if you were a, a zap head back in the day, you'll probably remember uh, this little character that you control, uh, Rockford. If you've never seen this game, you're probably thinking, my goodness, look at how jerkily everything moves. And yeah, that was that was kind of, that was my opinion when I first saw the game, because Zap uh, gave it a really good review. And uh, But when I first played the game, I thought, oh my goodness, this is, it's not smooth. But that's just the way it is. That's the way it is. Now again, on the C64, um, it's a lot of browns. Um, <laughs> no surprise. Whereas on Atari, it's, well, it does its own kind of colours. Again, it's going to be... It's up to you what one you prefer. Um, again, if chances are, if it was the C64 one you played back in the day, that's probably one you're going to favour. I think the C64 one is a fantastic game. It plays really, really well. But again, there's just... I think because the Atari one was the one that I remember watching... Uh, when I used to go to this old computer shop, the guy was an Atari dealer and this was the game that he played all the time. So I'm kind of, that's the one I remember, that's the one I've got all the memories of. And I think it just, it feels slightly ever so snappier. Again, because it's an arcade game, it just seems to respond just that tiny wee bit um, quicker. I don't know again if that's really coming across in the video, but I mean, both of them are absolutely sublime games. But again, if I was going to ever play this game, I would always play an Atari one. So, there you go. That is six games that are worth playing on either system. But if I was going to play them, I would definitely recommend you check out the Atari version. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.